back to my channel. Welcome if you are new. I am so excited to have you here for today's video. We're gonna talk about what I read in February. So I don't know what happened in February, but I feel like I jinxed myself with my overambitious TBR. You know, I think, I think that's what happened. I don't know why, but like the first two books that I read of this month took me a thousand years to read like it took me two weeks to read them each and february is already a short month so once that happened it was done so i tried to kind of pick up the pace a little bit at the end of the month but i still didn't get too too far but anyway one thing i do want to say is it really does not matter how much you read I try to read a lot of books because there's so many books on my TBR that I'm trying to get through. There's just so many stories. Like every day I just literally sit and I'm like, there's so many stories I'm gonna read. How the heck am I gonna read them all? I am going to share with you what I read this month. And I actually did enjoy most of the books that I read this month. I had one DNF and one book that I'm currently working through right now, but that I will be done today. I have five books here that I'm gonna be talking about. So because I did read so few books, I will just go in order of how I read them. I began the month with In the Weeds by BK Borison. Like I've said, and like you guys have probably heard so many times on this channel, this is part of a series, a three book series. The fourth book is coming out next year. It all centers around this farm called Love Light Farms in this town called Inglewood. The little town is actually kind of modeled after Stars Hollow from Gilmore Girls, if you know what Gilmore Girls is. This is the story of Evie and Beckett. And Evie is a strong, independent woman. She is working in social media and basically her passion is to seek out small businesses and to promote them seek out people who are doing good in the world and to put them on the map through her social media. So that's how she came across Love Light Farms. But she actually met Beckett one weekend. They had a one night stand and then they literally avoided each other like the plague. So when she turns up at Love Light Farms in the Love Light Farms book, which is the first book in the series, she's like to Beckett, who's the farmer at Love Light Farms, what are you doing here? And he's like, well, what are you doing here? So they already have this tension because they just, never talk about what happened but there are clearly feelings there so this book is them figuring that out figuring out what they want to do and finally talking because their miscommunication is literally horrendous but i actually really enjoyed this book it's definitely a spicy little novel but it's so cute i really loved it i love the two characters i gave this about a 3.5 stars um and that does not mean that i hated it a three star rating is pretty strong it's just like it didn't knock my socks off you know what i mean how old am I? I really enjoy it. I think it's a really cute romance novel. I do recommend it, but I just give it a 3.5 rating. The next book that I read was Things You Save in a Fire by Catherine Center. This was my blind date with a book pick. And as you know, I DNF'd it. I got to page like 125 and I just couldn't do it anymore. So this is a story about yet another strong independent woman. She is actually a firefighter and it's very uncommon to have a woman firefighter. It's heavily male dominated. Even in the fire stations, she's like the only girl there. A lot of it is about how she had suffered a lot of childhood trauma with her parents and just things that have happened in her life that make her completely avoid love at all costs, any relationships. Like she doesn't do any of it. She goes to this new fire station and apparently based on the back of this book she's supposed to start falling for one of the guys there which is super out of character for her however i could not get through this book like i said in the video where i did the blind date with the book the descriptions just kept taking me out of the story because she was describing everything in so much detail and it felt like she was just trying to prove to us that she knew what she was talking about, she being the author. So I just really could not get into the story and I was not interested. Maybe I'll pick it up another day, but for now this is definitely DNF'd and I give it like a two star rating. Next up we have Before I Let Go by Kennedy Ryan. Absolutely loved this. I give this a 4.5 star rating. This is the story of Yasmin and Josiah. They were married and then a big life event that they just can't seem to get over tears them apart. They have two kids and they're just basically trying to figure out how to navigate this new life. Yasmin and Josiah are like Derek and Meredith from Grey's Anatomy. Like no one ever expected for these two to split up. They're just like for lifers, locked in, college sweethearts, all that stuff. So they're just trying to navigate how to move forward in life after this big life event, this big life change. 
and the big life events that happened prior that caused this change to happen. This is a second chance romance and it is just the most beautiful story about two people navigating real life because as much as this was a romance, it was super cutesy. There were also some very real life things that were discussed. So definitely check trigger warnings. The thing that I absolutely loved the most about this was I literally felt so seen while reading this book. You know, there was so much black culture in it, so much warmth. It, it literally felt like a warm hug. I actually posted about this book on my story and then Kennedy Ryan responded and I told her, I was like, this book literally feels like a warm hug. So I absolutely love this, highly recommend. It is spicy as well. 4.5 stars for this from me. Next up, we have a story that I've been trying to get to for a while and I'm really glad that I picked it up. I still feel so affected by this book, guys. Like, I don't know what it is, but it was Addicted to You by Krista and Becca Ritchie. So this is the Addicted series, I believe, which I think is like a spinoff of the Calloway sisters. This is the story of Lo and Lily. Both of them are addicts. She's addicted to sex, he's addicted to alcohol. They've known each other forever, they grew up together. And because of their addictions, all they've ever had is each other. They basically isolate everyone else out and they stick together and they enable each other in their addictions. This is a love story. It's a story about addiction and the real things that happen because of it, the fallouts, all of that stuff. But this one really ripped my heart. Like, this one really ripped my heart apart. I really couldn't tell you what it was. It just felt so real and so raw. This one, I give a 4.5 star rating. I do highly recommend, but just know, check for trigger warnings. This is, rife with trigger warnings so definitely check and make sure before you read it but i really enjoyed it and i do plan on picking up the rest of the series at some point this year however i have so many other books that i need to get to so i cannot dive into this series yet but it was definitely a really good story there's also some found family in this as well it was really cute how that kind of all came together but oh man yeah it still has my heart all right and we've already come to the end of my t We've already come to the end of this wrap up, which is so crazy, but the last book that I am still currently reading, but that I will be finished with by today is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This was actually not even on my February TBR, so I don't even know how she slid herself in there. However, the Prime series is coming out on March 3rd, and I really, really wanted to get this in before it came out because I just feel like everybody's gonna be talking about it and I'm definitely gonna wanna be in the loop, so I needed to pick it up and read it. Otherwise, I was going to pick up The Love Hypothesis. I feel like I've been reading a lot about addiction, so I'm gonna definitely need like a little palate cleanser after this, cause this does touch on addiction as well. This is basically the story of the rise of a super popular rock band and how this one girl named Daisy Jones comes to be a part of the group that was originally called The Six and I guess they're going to become Daisy Jones and The Six. I don't know yet because I have refused to read the back of this book because I just don't want to know what is going to happen. I want to be completely shocked and surprised by everything that happens in here but I think that's the gist of it and we're just going to get their story. I've been told that this is based on Fleetwood Mac which is a group that actually exists and I think that's so interesting and I feel like now after I finish this I'm gonna be super interested in their story but I'm really enjoying it so far it's written in an interview style so you're getting everyone's points of view at the same time I just think that's so unique I don't think I've I've never read a book like that before and for the whole book to be written like that is so crazy and I think it takes a lot of talent because you're just constantly having to create these characters around each other. And I just feel like this style of writing, like the format of this book, makes it a page turner. Like I cannot stop reading this book. And honestly, the whole time I'm reading it, like my heart is beating so fast because I'm just waiting for like the ball to drop. It keeps you so locked in and I'm really enjoying it. It's probably gonna be somewhere between a four and a five star, probably in the four star range based on how it's going so far, but I'm very much enjoying it and I definitely recommend it. And this will probably be one of my favorite Taylor Jenkins read books, so yeah. 
So these were all my reads this month, for better or for worse. I'm thinking that for March, I'm not going to do a TBR because I think I am a mood reader. I think I'm slowly starting to figure that out. But you guys can always keep up with what I'm reading. Sometimes I'll post it on the community page, always on Goodreads, always updating that, and on my Instagram story as well. So those are the three places you can kind of find me. I'm on TikTok too, but if you wanna keep up with what I'm reading, those are the places you can find that. TikTok is more like comedic relief, et cetera, et cetera. So that's gonna be all for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy March, happy new month. Let me know down below what you're planning on reading or what you're currently reading. I'd love to know. And thank you guys so much for watching. I love you all and I'll see you in the next video. When you're not here, the sun don't shine. When you're not near, I don't feel like I do when you're with me. I felt like